good, good afternoon, Admiral. The, uh, I want to ask you about uh, Tuberville. Tub the continued <coughs> Tuberville hold on military promotion to the Pentagon. Yeah. He says, quote, as long as the Pentagon keeps the unlawful elective abortion policy in place, my holds will remain, end quote. That said, will the Pentagon rescind that policy to move those nominations through? I don't speak for the Pentagon anymore. I, I'm, uh, I'm here now. Uh, so I'd refer you certainly to my, my Pentagon colleagues. That said, uh, they have spoken to this many times. First of all, the senator's just wrong. It's not an unlawful policy. It's perfectly legal, perfectly in keeping with the law. Uh, he says it violates the Hyde Amendment. It doesn't. They, they've done a legal scrub at this at the, at the OD. It's just wrong. I'm not... While I won't speak for the Pentagon, I'm certainly just not going to let a lie and falsehood live on. It's not a violation of the law. It is a legal policy. All that they're doing is providing a tra uh, some travel uh, ability for female members of the military or their families. They're stationed in a place where the laws are restricted. They can go get the reproductive care that they deserve, that they have every right to expect from the United States military. So I'm sorry, Senator Tuberville's just wrong. The policy's not unlawful. Now, if, if he wants to take that up in Congress and, and pass new legislation, well, certainly that's the writ of Congress. But nothing that the Department of Defense or Secretary Austin is doing is unlawful. Nothing. If the national security is truly at risk, as the administration says, then isn't keeping that abortion policy in place, in effect, a superseding national uh, security? How? I'm not sure I understand. Well, you want to get the, the, the nominations through, right? You take back the policy. Oh, so, you, so the suggestion is... That we should just turn our backs. No, I get it. I didn't say it was yours. But the suggestion is we should just turn our backs on one in five of every, every person in the United States military, let alone their family members, just so we can get these, these officers confirmed. That's the suggestion that I think you're elucidating. Um, and that just would be an egregious violation of the covenant that we make, the military makes, with the people that sign up and volunteer. Remember this. They're volunteers. There's not conscription. There's no draft. People volunteer for this. And when they volunteer for that duty, they have every right to expect that they're going to get the health care they need. And let me tell you something else. A healthy force is a ready force. So don't talk to me about national security being impaired. Um, uh, the one impairing national security is Senator Tuberville, not only because he's depriving the military of necessary leadership in the field and at sea, but he's also willing to deprive female members of the military, 20 percent of the force, from necessary health care. That both is a violation of national security. How does it all end? How does it all wrap up? I can't possibly predict that, but you know, I could tell you how I'd like it to end. I'd like it to see, and I think I speak certainly for everybody in the administration, for Mr. Tubbo to lift his ridiculous hold. James, you have a